Welcome everyone to Acrylics, the one and only. I really appreciate you guys being here. Today we're talking about Dead Island 2. It's taken 10 years to get this game to come out, probably just a little bit more than that. It's been on the delay for about eight and a half years, but was the wait worth it? I'm gonna explain to you guys, not only was it worth it, most of the reviews and the criticisms of this game are invalid. And I'm gonna explain to you guys why not only is this the best zombie survival horror game out to date, but also why it's the most fun and over delivering of any of the zombie games I've played and why it exceeds Dead Island 1 and the Dying Light series. Let's dive right in. So the game was originally announced in 2014 and had undergone a difficult development period due to multiple changes with the studios working on it. Jaeger Development was originally hired to develop Dead Island 2 in 2012, but it was removed from the project in 2015 and replaced by Sumo Digital the following year. Sumo Digital was subsequently removed with Dam Buster Development Studios, which is an internal studio of Deep Silver, becoming the developers in 2019. Now, this goes without saying, but a lot of people are aware of the fact that Deep Silver have been a very difficult production company to deal with. They have not been fun for most studios. In fact, they really did not want to deal with Jaeger, and they definitely didn't want to deal with Sumo. Internal sources have reported that the difficulty of working with Deep Silver is the reason why Techland left and went and did their own project with Dying Light. It's no surprise they've had difficulties for the past 10 or 11 years trying to get this video game done, and the only reason why they actually got it done was because they had an internal studio that they basically own. In 2015, Jaeger provided an update and explained the situation that was going on with Deep Silver. The Jaeger team said, Our team at Jaeger is fully committed to the development of AAA quality titles, writes Timo Ullman, the CEO of Jaeger Group. We work closely with international publishers and partners and have at the same time always remained an independent development studio. Our team is made of the best creative minds and tech specialists who all share a common identity. The team worked with enthusiasm to take Dead Island 2 to a whole new level of quality. However, Jaeger and Deep Silver's respective visions of the project fell out of alignment, which led to the decision that has been made. We'll focus our current efforts on Dreadnought together with Six Foot and our publisher's gray box, as well as on new projects. More details will be disclosed soon. All I can reveal at this point is that Gamescom will be awesome for Dreadnought. That's what happened back in 2015. Now, on the original story with Deep Silver, it said the following. Deep Silver has announced that while Dead Island 2 is still in development, it is handing the reins to somebody else. The publisher has announced that it will be parting ways with Jaeger. This comes during a rough time for Deep Silver, which saw the delay of Dead Island 2 out for this calendar year. Homefront, the revolution, was also bumped due to problems with developer Crytek, which saw Deep Silver transfer the game to its own newly founded Dambuster Studios. With Dead Island 2, Deep Silver has always been dedicated to delivering the sequel that the Dead Island fans deserve, the company says in a prepared statement. After careful consideration to Today, we will announce the decision to part ways with development partner Jaeger. We will continue working towards bringing our vision of Dead Island 2 to life, and we will share further information at a later stage. This is pretty much one of the last updates we received in 2015, and then in 2019, they revealed that Dan Buster Studios had fully taken over and were in full development of the title to finish it. Finally, the game was supposed to release in February of 2022. That never happened. Then it was set to release in December 2022. That never happened. And then finally, it was set to release in February 2023. They pushed it back until April of 23 and the game finally released. Now, before I get into today's review and my opinion of this game, there are a lot of magazines and people who have already stated their opinions and reviews of the game saying that it's poor or limited or they've said it's not much more than nostalgia. I guess everybody was expecting one ginormous open world like Fallout 4 or something similar. However, this game does deliver the goods, although it may not be as serious as some people may have hoped. It does deliver Dead Rising type comedy relief in certain scenarios that I think play out very intelligently. Let's get on to the review. First, we're going to talk about something that's not the most important, but something that a lot of people are going to want to know about, and that is the graphics. Well, the graphics are definitely good. However, they are a little bit dated. They feel like something you would see on PC in 2014 or 2015, and coincidentally, that is exactly when Jaeger dropped the project. So the graphics really weren't the main focus of Dan Buster Studio 
Studios, although they probably did do some tweaks. Now, there is some good to this, and that is the fact that you don't need a high-end system to run. In fact, anybody who's got a 2060 or 2070 Super or 2080 Ti should be able to run the game at 240 frames per second. You don't need the top-end system to max out the graphics. In fact, I've got a 1300 KS, which is the brand new top-end Intel processor, and I also have that paired with an RTX 4090, and I'm getting over 400 frames per second, and that's become slightly problematic, and I have to limit the frames to 240 and turn on vSync because I am producing too many frames. So this game will actually run good on mid-end systems and the higher-end systems as long as you tweak the settings right. It makes it much more achievable for people who can't afford to build a better computer system, which is definitely a good thing. However, the graphics are really good. Now, the motion blur is a little bit overdone, but if you turn it to 50% or lower, it's really good, or turn it off like I have done. The graphics overall, though, are very good. The lighting is good. It feels like you're really in this environment. It feels like you're really in Los Angeles during a zombie apocalypse. It almost feels like you're in the Dead Island from 2012 with slightly upgraded graphics and better lighting. However, the graphics aren't the main focus of this game. I just wanted to point it out that they seem somewhat dated, but it's also a good thing, and the game still looks really good. For graphics out of 10, I give the game a solid 8.5. Next, we're going to talk about gameplay, which is the controls, how it feels, and how much fun you're going to have when playing the game. Now, the controls in this game are actually quite good. They're a little bit slower than Dying Light and about the same as the original Dead Island. They don't feel sluggish and they feel quite precise. You're not going to be able to mash buttons and go really fast like you're playing an arcade game because it almost feels more like an RPG slash survival horror. It's got a similar gameplay speed to something of that of Resident Evil. In fact, I would consider this game very much in line with Resident Evil 7 or the Biohazard and Resident Evil 8 Village. The gameplay is somewhat similar to that. Not identical, but in the same ballpark. The game feels really good and really smooth. There's no buttons that I press that I feel are lagging out or that are not responding. In fact, the game feels much better, in my opinion, than Dying Light 2. Although Deep Silver seems to be the villain here by delaying this game due to multiple studio changes, it's all in good result. In fact, Deep Silver have actually done what they said they would do, and that's deliver a worthy sequel to the original Dead Island. And I would go as far as to say that the gameplay in this game and the crafting mechanics are definitely superior to that of the original Dead Island. And I actually prefer it over Dying Light. You hear that, Techland? Deep Silver actually got this right. Not only is the gameplay refreshingly good in RPG slash survival horror-ish, the game feels quite accurate. Whatever weapon you choose, if you're aiming at the head, you're going to be getting more criticals than you would be on the body. When you're slicing or smashing zombies in the limbs, they break off. Everything just seems to be very accurate as far as the gameplay. Opening doors doesn't seem flimsy. You can't just run through the doors. You have to open them, which is very realistic because in some games you just run into the door and they fall apart or break open. That's not realistic. Nobody's going to run through a door with a deadbolt. The game plays very RPG-ish, which I've said multiple times. You got that? Like an RPG. Any case, this game is very good and feels very fluid. I found zero bugs in this game. The game has not glitched out or crashed at all, and I have found zero bugs. In fact, like certain other games, this game doesn't seem to have any issues. You've done a great job, Deep Silver, and so have you, Dan Buster Studios, at producing and publishing this game. So far, I have found zero issues. I give this game a solid 9.5 out of 10 for gameplay. Now it's time to talk about a very important aspect of any video game, and that is story. A lot of people are criticizing this story as being too comedic or not serious enough or not deep enough into subject matter. I've also seen reviews complaining that certain characters in the game don't develop or go deep enough or seem meaningless when you progress through the story. Now, in the developer and the game's defense, in a real zombie apocalypse, if such a thing ever occurred, the least thing on your mind is developing a meaningful relationship with somebody and more or less just survival. This game does not hang on to the sentimentals as some people, bizarrely enough, expect it to. You run into people, they get hurt, they get bitten, they die, or they survive and go their own way, but you're progressing through this story kind of like you really would in the real world scenario. I believe the story is somewhat basic, but also pretty realistic the way it comes across. There are certain tough decisions you're going to have to make along the way. Now, there are some characters in the game that you're going to come across that seem to be a little bit unintelligent and or a little bit weird or bizarre. However, in 
in real life, you're going to have these opinions of other people anyway. So it depicts the storyline pretty realistically if you're asking my opinion. Not to mention you're in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. So who's going to be sane anyway? People are going to be driven half nuts. The story is filled with lots of different characters on all of their own missions, meeting all of their own individual fates. However, there are quite a few moments of comic relief in the game. Most times it's very funny. Other times, not so much, but not too cheesy. And you would expect that from a game such as this, as it would be somewhat monotonous to have a game very scary like this with no comic relief. If that was the case, you would just be playing Resident Evil. Now, this game does deliver a somewhat basic and linear story. However, what it does do is deliver it perfectly. And I don't think anything needs to be changed. And for that, I give this game a nine out of 10 for story. Next, let's talk about a very important aspect of any video game, and that is sound. Not only the sound stage, but the effects and how deep it goes at putting you in the center of all the action and making you feel like you're really there. But not only that, the soundtrack and music to heighten or even lighten the mood in which the story you're trying to develop. Nothing will make you feel more like Rambo in an action scene than hard pounding, driving, adrenaline pumping music. And nothing will put you in a survival horror better than the most monotonous, simplistic sounds of screeching or different instruments echoing in the background. It is very well documented that Resident Evil and Silent Hill have done this with very minimalistic approaches and horrific sounds and music score in the background. Dead Island 2 delivers very horrific sound effects and nostalgic. Dead Island 2 delivers very perfectly in the sound department. At certain times in the game, before you fight a boss battle, things die down. They're quiet and it gives you the vibes of 80s retro synthwave horrific sounds in the background, leaving you wanting more. Then things get wild really quickly when you get attacked by a horde of zombies or a boss and a massive explosion engulfs you and the music drops the full-fledged action with high-quality driven techno synthwave or rock. This gives you the full-fledged Hollywood action feel for a video game. In fact, the music in this game, although different than Dying Light 1 or 2, or even the first Dead Island, this game over delivers and makes you feel like you're in a survival horror one moment, but you're in a full-fledged action flick the next moment. The game delivers very well. The foliage sounds throughout the game and meticulous sound effects here and there are very well placed, leaving you feeling like you want even more. And the reason I say that is the sound effects and music are so well put together and work very fluidly with the game. I just want this game to be longer and I want to play more of it. The sound effects and music in the game are quite honestly the best part of the game, even though the graphics, story, and gameplay are already good. The soundstage, presence, and how you feel while playing it are damn near perfect. In fact, I'm just going to say it's flawless. Nothing got me amped up more than fighting one of the bosses in the game and the music just ramps up. You don't believe me? Let's take a listen to this. Stand the fuck back. It's hammer time. Open sesame. Oh, shit sticks. I got this. Get the guns. <laughs> Jeez. Got it. So, who lived here? <laughs> Sam's over there just the smashing, bro. It was like fucking crazy. Fake snow, too. Locked. Oh, shit. There she is. Not looking so hot today, Nikki. Hey, bitch. Still thinking too good for you.
Now that is pretty epic, wouldn't you say? For sound, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to give it a 10 out of 10. It is flawless. Dam Buster, Deep Silver, you both did a terrific job. Last but not least, we're going to talk about replay value. This game is only about 50 hours long. I'm about 20 hours in and 40% through the game. That doesn't include side missions or any of the future add-ons that are going to be coming out. But the storyline and sound, as well as the action, deliver flawlessly, so it's going to be a very perfectly balanced game. Short and sweet instead of long, drawn out and monotonous, almost like Mass Effect Andromeda, doing the same thing over and over again. Eventually, it gets boring. This game is the perfect balance of being flawless for a short 50 hours. You're going to wish it was longer. It's going to leave you desiring more, and that is what a video game should do. I want to talk about one more thing right quick, and that is the crafting and skills systems. You're going to be getting cards for your skills to put them in skill slots, and you can use pretty much any card you want in any combination. There is a lot of different skills you're going to acquire, like blocking and dodging. One of my favorite skills is when you rage out and scream. It's going to give you more health at the cost of some endurance and stamina, but also damage the zombie's defense for a limited time. There's a lot of other skills to equip and learn along the way. It never gets old learning new skills in the game. There's so many to use. You can also talk to the vendor at home base, and he will not only buy things off you so you can acquire some extra money for upgrades, but you can also buy things from him that you can't find around the natural environments. You can also upgrade old weapons to match your current level. You can add fire, physical damage, electricity, or toxic poison to any of your weapons. It's really cool, and the crafting system is very easy. You just got to look for a workbench just like the original Dead Island. So overall, I say value and replay value is pretty good. I would like to play this game all the way through again with all the different characters to not only hear their different sides and opinions of what's happening in front of them. Another thing that I think that makes this game have high replay value is there's different characters to choose from. They have different lines, different reactions, and stories throughout the game, making the experience quite different. I can see myself playing this game through beginning to end five different times. However, I only intend to complete all the side missions once. I will be doing speed runs with the remaining characters. This way I can get the full story and the full picture of this entire game. And considering the perks and the crafting in this game, such as the battle cry that damages the defenses of the zombies and increases your health slowly at the cost of stamina, being able to put on fire, electricity, physical damage, or poison on your weapons, and being able to max them to your level at any time, and the vendors, the graphics, the sound, the storyline, I give the value a 10 out of 10. So my final thoughts on this game, if you've been waiting since the original Dead Island, look no further. This will over deliver from what your expectations were. And not only that, I think it exceeds Dying Light 1 and Dying Light 2, as they are slightly different niches in the zombie survival horror than the original Dead Island. In fact, most people playing Dead Island and Riptide, if you're looking for the perfect sequel to Dead Island, look no further, this is it. It exceeds my expectations and it most likely will exceed yours as well. For all the original fans of Dying Light and Riptide that were waiting for a sequel and got Dying Light and liked that game or even loved it, but were still just waiting for the true sequel to Dead Island as it's its own niche and storyline as well as style of gameplay, this is the much deserved and anticipated sequel of the last 11 years. This game exceeds Dying Light and it exceeds Dying Light 2 in its own way. And it's not necessarily that it's a better game, it's just a much better suited sequel to the original and it's the successor to Dead Island that we've been waiting for for 10 years. No offense, Techland, you did a great job with Dying Light 1 and a pretty good job at Dying Light 2. You just couldn't deliver the niche gameplay and storyline. You just couldn't deliver the niche gameplay and storyline which encompasses this sequel to the original Dead Island that we've wanted for so long. Thanks for trying really hard and giving us great games. Dan Buster and Deep Silver have given us something that has been much worth the 10 year wait and I thank them for that and I hope you guys enjoyed. Fun fact, Dead Island 2 was not the longest delay in gaming history. Nope. That title goes to Duke Nukem Forever. 3D Realms was set to make the successor to Duke Nukem 3D in 1997, but after multiple engine changes, problems with inside the companies, and massive delays, they didn't see the game release until 2011. Yeah, 14 years later. 
crazy, right? Check me out over on TikTok, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, any platform you prefer for the live streams. I've partnered with TikTok. We'll see you guys over there. Hope you guys have yourselves a great day. Thanks so much. Subscribe, tap the bell, and share this video with anybody you think that would like it. We'll see you on the next upload of live stream. Take care of yourselves and have a great day. You guys are still here? Well, I put up a video for you guys right there on the screen. I think you're going to like it. Go ahead and click that video. It's just for you. Come on. You guys know you want to. Go ahead and click it. You guys are going to love it. It's handpicked by me just for you. Show the support.